Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 16th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about ambitious goals to, for reducing carbon emissions and limiting, limiting the damage of human-caused climate change to both human civilization and our world. But before I do, I'd just like to share with you this NOAA image of, of the eastern portion of our world and which captures the United States and North America and South America and large sections of the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic and the North Pacific and South Pacific. And I'd just like to remind you that that the world that we live in today is, is a living world, is a vital world, but it is a world that has been pushed close, closer and closer to perilous tipping points that will ca cause harm both to human beings and to the natural systems that we all rely on and that it's imperative that we do everything we can to halt the damage and to reverse it if possible. So, so as we think about that, we should think about what it means to, to burn fossil fuels. And, and ultimately, in the end, if you keep burning fossil fuels, you end up with a, a worst case scenario of, of human caused climate change that leads to a hothouse world state where the earth's life support systems are, are ravaged and, and overwhelmed and, and the ability of earth to sustain life is greatly reduced and this is a this is a danger to us all. We're not there yet. We're not yet anywhere close to a hothouse mass extinction, but we are heading in that direction at a much faster pace than at any time in geological history. And the reason why we're doing that is primarily because we are burning fossil fuels which is emitting billions of tons of carbon into the Earth's atmosphere year after year, decade after decade. This action that we are undertaking, that, that fossil fuel industry has continued to convince us to undertake, because we do have a choice. We can choose the clean energy systems. We can choose to keep fossil fuels in the ground and not mine it, not extract it, and not burn it. As global civilization, we can make that choice. We have that ability, we have that power. Anyone who tells you something else is selling something, and the thing that they're selling is fossil fuels. So burning fossil fuels is, is a danger. It's, it's, a, it's a danger to us all, and it, it's a danger that is setting off events that are starting to become more extreme, more damaging, and more harmful to you, me, our families, and the living creatures of this earth that we all care about. So what I'm gonna to talk to you today is, is how much can we limit the damage? What, what is the possible stretch limit for, for limiting damage from human-caused climate change? as a result of fossil fuel burning. And the reason why I wanna talk about this is that our ambition to limit damage is directly related to how much damage results. So, so what I mean is, say, say if you're you know, pursuing any goal, say, say you're, you wanna run a marathon, you, you, you're not going to and, and you're going to you're, you're going to try and win the marathon. You're not you're not going to say, well, 
it's not practical for me to, to go out and train every day for three or four hours, to, to run twice a day, to eat the right foods, to manage uh, the nutritional benefits of, of foods so that, I, so that you can optimize your own physiology, your own body, your own training to, to perform at, at the peak of what you're absolutely capable of. You're not going to say, oh, well, you know, once a week's enough. And, and we absolutely shouldn't do the same thing when it comes to human-caused climate change. We, could, we should aim for not only what we know we are capable of, but we should aim beyond that. We should, we should try to do what we're not sure that we're capable of. We, we should try and shoot beyond what we presently believe are our limits of our capacity for response. So capacity for response in many cases has been defined as, as a carbon budget. And I don't really like the word carbon budget. Carbon budget implies that there's carbon left out there that we can still burn. In all honesty, if we're going to be safe, if we're going to be as, as safe as we possibly can, th there's really no carbon budget out there. there there's only carbon debt. And, and the carbon debt that we've assumed is, is showing up as the warming that we see now. The, warm, the 1.0 to 1.2 degrees Celsius warming that we have already attained above 1880s levels that is already resulting in harm and damage. So, so there's no carbon budget. There's, there's carbon debt. And, and the question is, how rapidly can we cut our carbon debt to zero? How rapidly can we get ourselves to a point where we're not emitting a net level of carbon in the atmosphere? And then beyond that, how can we get to a negative carbon society? So, so that's just some thoughts about carbon budget and carbon debt. But, but looking at stretch goals for human-caused climate change, the, the number that we're probably aiming at, the one that we might not be able to achieve but that we should shoot for, is 1.5 degrees Celsius warming or less. And, and that's, that's what's most safe for human civilization. People talk about 2 degrees Celsius. I'll tell you this, 2 degrees Celsius is dangerous. There's, there's all sorts of tipping points that come into play if you get, get to 2 degrees Celsius. And it might not even be possible for us to limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius, even if we are super crazy ambitious, even if we do all the things that I'm saying and aim for 1.5 C but miss. But what I am saying is we don't really know exactly how sensitive the Earth system is. What we do know is how much we can do and what we should try to accomplish. And, and what we should try to accomplish is limiting warming to 1.5 C or less, even if that's not possible. So what I'm looking at here is, is, a, is a survey of models. And I know I've talked a lot. Uh, and these models are, are showing projections for how much carbon you know, we might admit, emit and still limit warming to 1.5 C. And you can see that the range is from around 800 billion tons to already having overshot by about 200 billion tons. And that's a big range, right? So that gives you an idea of, of really how uncertain we are about how far along we are with human-caused climate change. But, but what we should be doing is, is doing our best to run down Michael Mann's black diamond slope of carbon emissions as rapidly as possible. And, and we have a reasonable hope that maybe around 200 billion tons or less results in a, a potential for hitting 1.5 C. Now, I'm not going to say what my opinion is. I've seen quite a lot with regards to human-caused climate change. But what I will say is that it is very helpful to aim, to, to take your best shot and to aim for it.
Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting.